J.D. McDuffie was a Winston Cup Series driver that drove from the early 60s to the late 90s. He was born and raised in Sanford, North Carolina. He would attend his very first race at the historic Bowman Gray Stadium at just the age of 10 and would soon be inspired to start a career of his own. He would start off by racing go-karts and then eventually transition over to dirt track racing. During this time, he would also pick his iconic number 70 early on, simply because it was easy to paint and to remember. After winning several short track races throughout the Carolinas, McDuffie would make his Winston Cup Series debut in 1963. He would drive Curtis Turner's old 1961 Ford to a 12th place finish at Myrtle Beach. McDuffie was an underdog from the start, as he was just another independent driver when he first came on to the Winston Cup Series circuit. Although McDuffie never finished a race on the lead lap, he was still somewhat competitive for the equipment he was running in. 1969 to 1982 were his prime years. 1969 was the first year he would have double digit top 10s with 12. In 1971, he would also post two top fives and eight top 10s while leading his first career laps and finishing ninth in the standings. Then in 1973, he would post another double digit top 10 season with 10 and would finish 10th in the standings. He would even win the pole for the fall Dover race in 1978. The most interesting thing about this is he won the pole running on McCreary tires. He had already established himself as an independent favorite amongst fans. He practically ran the Cup Series circuit on his own with the help of some friends and family and local sponsors along the way. Despite this being some of his best years, he would also go through the typical independent hardships. Whether it was not being able to make a race or not being able to finish a race due to all the mechanical failures and also going through some hard crashes. The most notable out of all these crashes was during the fourth lap of the 1975 Daytona 500. McDuffie had slowed behind a pileup on lap 4 but veered hard to the right and smashed head on into the outside wall. This resulted in a fractured breastbone and would keep him in the hospital for a couple of weeks. As the years rolled on, Cup Series teams were starting to get more sponsorship, leading to more money being put into their programs. McDuffie had no choice but to work with what he had. This meant resorting to buying used parts, tires, and chassis, as well as building his own engines. 1982 was the final season McDuffie ever posted a top 10 finish. His best years were long gone, but he was still the most popular independent driver amongst fans. His son Jeff also made a handful of Cup Series starts for his father from 1980 to 1985. Whatever publicity he could get, he took. During the 1985 Daytona 500, CBS Sports ran a special on what it was like to be one of the independent guys to run on the Cup Series circuit. Driving a race car is my way of making a living. J.D. McDuffie. My way of putting the bread on the table at home. He started 574 races, has made a million dollars. I'm getting back about half as much as I'm giving. He's never won a race and has hardly a nickel to his name. And I couldn't make it without a good woman at home. Yeah, I have to cut a lot of corners, buy used parts, and run used tires, and knowing how to build the engines and the only thing myself, that's... That's a big saver right there, because I could never buy a fifteen to $20,000 engine. I'd be out of business in about two races, you know. He's not a quitter. Jay, he's not. I would have quit a long time ago, probably. <laughs> I would. The last three years, I've been running on borrowed money, you know, and you just can't do that. And I'm getting slipping a little farther back, but maybe I'll have some help this year where I can show up, you know. Yeah. I've always felt Johnny was left out. He never got a fair shake, because he's got the experience, and he can drive. To run with the best in the world, you know, I could probably go out here and run somewhere else and run right up front, you know, but you ain't got the caliber of competition there, you know. If I can make the top 10 in this, I've, I've really done something. Despite all of this publicity, he would unfortunately miss the Daytona 500 that season. Outside of this one special and a few shoutouts during races, the only way McDuffie ever got airtime was when he either wrecked or when something bizarre happened. 
trouble on the front straightaway. J.D. McDuffie spins and hits the wall in the front stretch. That car making contact with the inside wall, and we have another yellow flag. He's been true to his word. All right, here we go with our first qualifier of the evening. It's J.D. McDuffie, 47-year-old, but the red flag is out. We have an individual walking on the racetrack, as a matter of fact, right down in front of us. And as, she, as soon as she can go through the gate and uh, get herself off of the speedway, we'll resume these time trials. One of the stories of the weekend is the story, sadly, of J.D. McDuffie, an independent who's been racing for a quarter of a century. His best finish was in this very race. That finish was only a seventh. He's run some 631 events and never tasted victory, sat on the pole once. Earlier, we talked to J.D. McDuffie at the hospital today about his injuries. Well, I'm feeling pretty good. I still got that much pain in my hands. My hands uh, got second and third degree burns on it in my leg, but uh, I'm going to be all right here in a week or two, but uh, it's, it's, it's burnt pretty bad, my hands are, but I was lucky to get out of it. The love of the sport, you know, that's, that's all I've ever done is race, and uh, that's all I know. And uh, I, I still love to do it, uh, and I'll be back. The backstory behind that incident is some douchebag stole his gloves right before the race. Entering the late 90s, McDuffie was beginning to make the transition to just being an owner. He was running fewer and fewer races in his later years and also took a driver named Marty Burke under his wing as a protege to run in a few ARCA races and Winston Cup Series races. Unfortunately, this plan wouldn't come to fruition because on August 11th, 1991, tragedy would strike. And here's trouble, big trouble here in turn five. Oh, a car is upside down. Bob, there are two cars. They, they came in here so fast, and one of them did hit the other one and uh, did get upside down. Both of them hit very, very hard. I believe that's J.D. McDuffie who is uh, on his roof. And one of the drivers is coming out of the car right now. That's Jimmy Means. And now he's going to see if he can assist J.D. McDuffie in getting out of his car. McDuffie's car is on its roof, and Jimmy Means is calling for assistance. Well, with further information on the status of J.D. McDuffie, here is Chip Williams, the Director of Public Relations for NASCAR. And Chip, uh, what's the information? Jerry and, and Bill, I, I regret to inform you that uh, J.D. McDuffie has passed away. Uh, he's 53 years old. Uh, of course, our hearts right now was his wife, Ima Jean, and, and, and his uh, children, Jeff and Linda, and it's, it's really a pretty sad day right now. The night before, McDuffie won a local celebrity race at Shangri-La Speedway. The next day, he would die in a crash at Watkins Glen. McDuffie's left front wheel spindle broke off the car, causing him to lose brakes and hit means in the right front. With no brakes to stop his car and no gravel trap in that same corner, McDuffie hit the outside retaining wall and tire barrier with such force that the car shot into the air, rotated, and then came to rest upside down. There's so much I could say about McDuffie's career, his legacy, and what he meant to the sport at the time, but I wouldn't be able to do it justice. So I found someone who was a lot closer to McDuffie and his team than myself, the one and only Brock Beard. J.D. McDuffie was a driver that not a lot of NASCAR fans even now know about and was obscure kind of in his own time between 1963 and his tragic passing at Watkins Glen in 1991. Uh, he was a driver that had the most NASCAR starts without a win, 653 starts. Uh, the most last place finishes, uh, 32, from 1980 until well after his passing in 2014. Um, this was a driver perhaps known more, if anything, from his shortcomings, but it was also lesser known as being a person that really visibly didn't seem to let that get him down, that was determined to come out there every week and do the very best he could with the limited resources he had. He never had a major corporate sponsor, he never uh, had a large shop or a large crew, but he had, a, he, had a good, he had a good determined family behind him, and a family that extended into his crew members as well, the ones just either if they were neighbors or friends or just well-wishers, um, keeping that car number 70 on the track, and indeed in time became iconic with that number. Uh, this is a number that we haven't even seen run in the Cup Series, even on an intermittent basis. 
uh, since 2009. So this is a driver that's still very much recognized with his number, which really speaks to um, his legacy, uh, even though he never won a race. And uh, it also inspired me to actually write his biography, which I completed last year. Uh, it's called JD, The Life and Death of a Forgotten NASCAR Legend. It's published through Waldorf Publishing Company out of Texas. And uh, it was published last July. And it is a complete account, uh, as best I could, as somebody uh, outside of uh, his inner circle, uh, of his life and his time in racing, as well as the most complete ac uh, account that I could put together of the events that led to August 11th, 1991, uh, when he lost his life on the fifth lap of the Budweiser at the Glen at Watkins Glen International. And uh, he was actually the last driver to die uh, during a NASCAR Cup Series race until Dale Earnhardt in 2001. So the uh, the legacy of J.D. McDuffie is is something that um, I think people will be really interested in, and um, you know something that uh, you know that will inspire people to, you know, you sometimes in life you just have to make the most with what you have, whatever that may be. And those are you know life lessons that uh, J.D. certainly knew too well. And he had, uh, you know, very little beyond just his own willpower and his own determination. But it was enough to keep him in the sport that he loved for that long. And he did it against all odds, perhaps uh, even longer than he even, he even thought he was going to. And um, that's a story I think a lot of people can relate to. Very much the blue-collar racer, the forgotten man in the sport. And, um, you know, that's the way I think that he would like to be remembered, although he was very, you know, very shy from everybody that I've talked to um, during his life. Um, I think, I hope at least, that that is the, you know, the legacy that he would have liked to have left behind, because that's certainly the way it felt to me. J.D. McDuffie was 53. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.